హలో ఎవ్రీవాన్ అండ్ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు మై ఛానల్ జ్ఞాన సంపద సిన్స్ ఫ్యూ క్లాసెస్ వీ ఆర్ డీలింగ్ విత్ ద టాపిక్ ఆఫ్ సెమీ కండక్టర్ డివైసెస్ వేర్ అవర్ మెయిన్ కాన్సన్ట్రేషన్ వాజ్ ఆన్ పి అండ్ జంక్షన్ సో ఫస్ట్ వీ స్టార్టెడ్ విత్ ద ఈక్విలిబ్రియం అండ్ నౌ వీ ఆర్ డీలింగ్ విత్ ద నాన్ ఈక్విలిబ్రియం స్టేట్ and in our today's class we are going to study about the continuity equation in semiconductors so as such continuity we can understand it is with respect to the flow in semiconductors there are two types of charge carriers one is electron and another one is hole so their corresponding flow which is responsible for current is going to be mathematically interpreted in this continuity equation and in our today's class we are going to consider the different factors which are responsible in deriving continuity equation second one is the derivation part third one is the electron continuity equation and finally the whole continuity equation so both are the charge carriers their continuity equation will be considered and finally these continuity equations will be interpreted in terms of current density that is j So let's get started with today's class on continuity equations. So as such continuity equation in physics is an equation or we can say it is a mathematical way to describe transport of some quantity. And under this we have a simple aim that is to study the behavior of a semiconductor with respect to axis carriers due to different parameters which are responsible for it that is it is going to give us the electron hole continuity equation so mainly the axis carriers in semiconductors are due to three reasons first one is generation and recombination whereas second one is diffusion moving to the third one that is drift so in general we have already studied about all these parameters and how they are going to be responsible for different currents so generation and recombination both are simultaneous processes diffusion is when there is a concentration gradient and drift is when we apply external field and everywhere we can observe there is a moment of charges and based on these factors we will derive electron hole continuity equation so next let's move on to the derivation part of it it is derived by considering combined time rate of change of axis carrier density within a volume element so if you consider this as a semiconductor block we are going to consider a certain volume element inside this which is having a length of delta x so the block here what you are observing is having the length delta x so if this is considered as x position then this point or this plane corresponds to x plus delta x so let us say this is plane 1 and this side is plane 2 then the number of electrons in the volume element will be given as delta n into a into delta x a into delta x is nothing but area into thickness which means it is volume delta n is axis carriers so if this gives the number of electrons in the volume element then the rate of change or rate of increase of axis carriers is given by d by dt of delta n a into delta x so this is in general what will be the change with respect to the time so how axis carrier number is going to change as time passes is given by this equation and now we will consider what are the factors on which the axis carriers are going to change so first one is recombination second one is diffusion of electron and finally drift one thing to remember is that when we consider recombination it is understood that generation is also involved with recombination so the rate of change of axis carriers due to recombination 
This involves the lifetime and the equation is given as Rn is equals to d by dt of delta n that is rate of change of axis carriers due to recombination is equals to minus delta n by tau n where tau n is the lifetime and delta n is equals to n minus n naught that is the number of axis electrons. n is the number of final electrons and n naught is the initial number of electrons that is before and after recombination. Negative sign implies that there is annihilation of charge carriers. And let us call this equation as equation number 1. Moving to the second factor that is rate of change due to diffusion. So already when studying semiconductors we have studied about diffusion, diffusion coefficient and also Einstein relation. So this graph explains the same. Initially the concentration gradient is very high and slowly because of that concentration gradient the charge carriers are going to diffuse and finally peak becomes flattened. And while studying Einstein relation we got the relation between the diffusion rate and axis electron gradient which is given by dn into dou by dou x of delta n. One thing to remember is rate of change is with respect to time but concentration gradient is with respect to position. So as the position changes that is along x axis the change in axis carrier is also taking place because of diffusion. Because when a p-n junction is formed n side consists of majority electrons and p side consists of majority holes. So when the junction is formed there is a huge concentration gradient due to which the electrons from n side they diffuse towards p region and the holes from p side they tend to diffuse towards n region. So because of that diffusion we can observe there is a change in carriers and the rate of change or the rate of diffusion current into the volume is given by dn into a dou by dou x of delta n. Here a is the area of cross section dn is the diffusion constant. So in the volume element we can observe the gradient something like this where one side is p side another side is n side of the volume element. Similarly the rate of diffusion with respect to plane 2 that is on this side is equals to dn into a into dou by dou x of delta n plus dou by dou x of this gradient into the width or thickness of the volume element. So from plane 1 and from plane 2 we can get the net rate of increase in electrons due to diffusion in the volume element and that will be equal to the difference between these two that is plane 2 minus plane 1 where clearly we can observe first part is going to cancel out and it can be simplified and written as d by dt of delta n due to diffusion is equals to dn into a into dou by dou x dou by dou x will be written as dou square by dou x square of delta n into delta x and we are calling it as equation number 2. So this is the change due to diffusion and diffusion is mainly because of majority charge carriers. And the next factor on which we are going to see the rate of change is due to drift. Important thing to remember about drift is drift is due to minority charge carriers. In P region minority charge carriers are electrons whereas in N region minority charge carriers are holes. So the axis electrons at plane 1 is delta n so that their current density due to drift is going to be j is equals to delta n e mu n into e. So this e is the electric field. Due to diffusion we need to remember that in the junction near to n region we have accumulation of positive charges. Near the p region of the junction we have negative 
charge accumulated. So this positive and negative charges which are accumulated, they create an electric field which are going to act as a barrier. So we call it as a potential barrier. And because of that electric field also we can observe there is drift taking place. That is minority charge carriers are going to move from N to P and P to N. That is the self generated electric field will be acting from N region towards P region. So that the holes which are minority carriers in N region will drift towards P region whereas the holes which are minority charge carriers in N region will drift towards P region. So that is about E. Mu N is the mobility of electron, E is the charge and delta N is the axis carrier. And the current leaving the volume is given by the same into A that is area of cross section. Then if you consider at plane 2 the axis electron density is given by delta N plus change in delta N so that the current entering the volume is this change multiplied by E mu N E into A. So for plane 1 this is the current and for plane 2 this is the current with respect to the volume element. So now net rate of change due to drift or we can say net rate of increase in the number of electron due to drift E is equals to current entering the volume minus current leaving the volume divided by E that is at plane 2 minus plane 1 divided by E. So substituting one term is going to cancel out then charge of the electron also gets cancelled out so that we are left with delta of delta n mu n into E into A. So this delta can be written as dou by dou x into delta x where delta x is the thickness or extent of volume element. So this just explains the change in electron density in the volume element of side delta x. So if we want to pictureize in the PN junction this side is plane 1, this side is plane 2 which we have considered as the volume element then drift will be from P towards N that is drift current and diffusion current will be from N towards P. So finally explaining change in axis carriers. So coming back, rate of change due to drift is given by dou by dou x of delta n mu n e a into delta x which we are calling as equation number 3. Then finally if we want to find out what is the total rate of change we need to consider all these three equations and the net rate of increase in the electron or the total rate of change of electron in unit volume is given by sum of all these factors. Here we can observe A into delta x is nothing but area into thickness which is volume which will be considered as 1 because we are considering per unit volume. So finally we get the equation which is the equation of continuity for electron. Similarly we can write the continuity equation for holes also. So instead of n we will substitute it as p and this is the continuity equation for holes. So equation 4 and 5 are called as electron hole continuity equation and all parameters have their usual meaning. Then another form of continuity equation can be expressed based on current density. So current density we have already studied. So here all the parameters are required generation, recombination, drift and diffusion. By considering all those mainly drift and diffusion we can write Gn is equals to 
delta n e mu n into e plus e d n dou by dou x of delta n. So if we differentiate this equation with respect to x, we get dou by dou x of j n is equals to e mu n into e into dou by dou x of delta n plus e d n dou square by dou x square of delta n. So taking 1 by e that is bringing this e to the LHS side and then using equation number 4. Finally we substitute equation 4 and we get 1 by e dj n by dx is equals to dou by dou t of delta n plus delta n by tau n. So rearranging this expression we get equation number 6 which gives the continuity equation for electrons in terms of current density j n. And similarly for holes we have the continuity equation in terms of whole current density jp. So these are some of the details about continuity equations with respect to all the three factors and in terms of current density which are important parameter in pn junction under non-equilibrium. So in the next class we will deal with the IV characteristics and saturation current. So this is it for today's class. See you in the next class. Till then stay tuned, study well and thank you for watching.